I was probably very confusing as a kid because I did well in school, um, but I didn't quite fit in. I'll be honest, I had platinum blonde mohawk as a senior. Um, you know, the chains, I did not fit the part of, let's say, uh, <laughs> a good student. I didn't get into any trouble. I didn't, you know, do anything, you know, suspicious or anything. I just played in bands. And I think the worst thing that would happen is the one band I was in, in my senior year, uh, the neighbors called the cops almost daily on us. We would play so loud. Oh, wow. And we're knocking like, all right, and it's us again, quiet down. <laughs> That's quite the extent of my, my mischief. Hey guys, welcome to the DMT show. It is episode 28. I am a show. My name is Andy. My name is Jason. And my name is Aaron. And today we've got another special guest with us today. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi everyone. I'm uh, Neil Hagen. Uh, I guess most of you know me as Mr. Hagen, uh, one of the technology teachers at the high school. I'm very excited to be here. All right. So Mr. Hagen, one of the very special things about you is that you teach a lot of clubs. What are some of the clubs that you teach at that, that you, I guess not teach, but like one of the clubs you supervise in the high school? What are they? Uh, well, right now I'm part of two of the clubs. So uh, uh, robotics is kind of the, the big one. Uh, you know, there were a lot of kids. Uh, Ari and Andy, uh, <laughs> you guys know uh, quite well. And uh, as of this year, I've been part of the hydroponics group that is looking to become an actual club for next year. So yeah. it's very exciting because uh, although they're very different, uh, there's, there are a lot of similarities as far as the ambition and, uh, you know, the excitement that all of you have. I remember like in freshman year, like part of the, one of the halves of the year was yeah. like a tech research like part of the year and like hydroponics is part of that. I guess like the tech part and could also play into the robotics part. That's kind of maybe the link between the two. Yeah. I what I was going to say was just in case anyone didn't, doesn't know, can you explain what like hydroponics is? Because it's not very often used, but yeah. It's definitely becoming more popular. Yeah, well, hydroponics is the growth of plants uh, really without soil. It's basically using water. So you can use inert material uh, to grow, you know, produce. And uh, um, it actually it conserves water and uh, even conserves space. And in a lot of cases uh, can save money as well. So a lot of advantages to hydroponically grown uh, plants because you don't have the insects that would be living in, in dirt. And um, like I said, the conservation of water is a big one. Uh, and in addition, since you don't have insects, there are no insecticides. So your plants aren't affected or let's say your apples, your tomatoes, they're not affected by insecticides and they actually have a, a bigger flavor. So uh, several advantages. Hey, would you just use the hydroponics for like farming plants? Kind of like those wheats and stuff? Or would you use it for like you can really use it for decoration, right? Well, as far as we, that would be a, a, a tricky one because you really, you think of traditional farming, you have these, you know, acres and acres of, of land. Yeah. A lot of um, even urban areas, as far as cities, like New York City is actually um, full of hydroponic farms. They call it vertical farming. So you could be, you could look at a building and see the structure that looks like any kind of warehouse, but inside they could have towers and towers uh, of growing different types of vegetables that actually supply the restaurants that exist in the city. So it's a great way to get your food faster as well. So it's not traveling across the country uh, to get to you and it doesn't spoil as, uh, you know, quickly. That's that's good. <laughs> like I say, it sounds like a lot of advantages. Also having it more local, uh, like and also like you said with the insecticides and, you know, just no insects in general living at all, kind of just, I don't know, it's just something else, one less thing to worry about. Also, saving space is always good because, you know, certain plants take up a lot of space. I'm sure you can't do Actually, let me ask, can you do it for almost all plants or are there kind of certain plants that you can do it for? Some are harder than others, you know, uh, yeah. it's a little bit of work and there's a lot of science involved. That's why, you know, it was introduced in the science research class. And that's kind of what sparked the idea of the club. And uh, ultimately what the, the group is trying to do is, is 
uh, be able to actually supply, whether it's um, you know a food shelter or or something like that, so uh, they can make an impact on the society. So um, there, there's a lot to it, and there, there's a lot of opportunity uh, with the hydroponics. So I know the kids that are creating it, and it's really it, it's the group of, of students that helped create the club, and, and they're really taking it to the next level. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a great transition into robotics, I guess. So, um, of course, robotics is a little bit more up in my alley. I am a uh, robotics. I'm part of the club. But, Mr. Hagen, we do definitely... When did you start? Are you new? Um, I started like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm still, still getting learning how, how everything works. But um, we definitely do cause a lot of problems for you, Mr. Hagen. So one of the questions I have for you is what's the, what's the hardest part of being a robotics coach? First off, no, you don't create problems for me. <laughs> it's called controlled chaos. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> um, I can't say there's a biggest problem because there's just a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. And sometimes it's just making sure we have enough space for all of you. I think that's the biggest problem. And I think that's our biggest concern is that, you know, we have the space and everything that you all need. Because as you know, this is the students club. You run everything, you're in every single um, aspect of the design, the development, the logging, the outreach. Um, we just try to keep up with you. <laughs> That's the biggest problem. I'm old. That's my not biggest that. problem. You're not old. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Here, so here, I'll ask them this then. So if there's not many problems, what would you say is the the best thing about being um, a robotics coach, mentor, whatever, advisor, right whatever back. you want to call yourself. At you all again, it's really all of you. Again, like I mentioned, the biggest problem is actually the biggest excitement because you are so enthusiastic and so driven. Uh, it's kind of, um, it leaves me in awe most days. <laughs> you flatter us. It's a good flatter thing. Us. <laughs> do you think it's something similar with the hydroponics club also? Or I, I do club? see it. I think it's kind of like the vibe around the school is that there's just so much investment with the students that, uh, again, like we, we're facilitators as advisors. And we want to just make sure that you all have what you need to accomplish your goals and kind of see the opportunities that are out there. Uh, I'm so excited to be part of all of this because you take advantage of every club, every group, every, you know, extracurricular activity. So uh, it's just all excitement. So yes, it is. It, it's kind of across the board with both. both <laughs> all right. Cool. I agree. I think I think the strong suit of our school is like also the variety of clubs and also just like, uh, I guess like there's always membership for each one too. Like you can see there's a lot of different motivation and, and drive for each club and for different groups of people. And there's a, there's a group for everybody. So I think that's definitely a good thing. Yeah, um, I guess uh, so just, no. Okay, so I just uh, from seeing you in the hallway too, and just from speaking of what Arian says, um, I have a question for you. It's how and why are you always so positive and nice to everybody? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a silly I mean, question. It sounds like a silly question, but like every day I see you, there's never a day where you're not smiling, and like no one, like no average person could keep that up. So like, how do you do it? What, what's a, is, it, is, it is it something in breakfast that you eat that just makes you smile every day? I don't, I don't understand. Honestly, I, it's the enthusiasm. I'm very appreciative of where I am and uh, whether it's my family, whether it's all of you, I have nothing to complain about. I love my job. I love working with all of the students, the other teachers. I don't see why I should be angry or upset. <laughs> have you have you taught at other schools? There you go. Have I'm you taught at other? I was gonna say, have you taught yes. at other schools before? Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, I taught at Seaford for nine years before I came over to Sayasit, oh, wow. and before that, a oh. short time over at Brentwood uh, as well. So, which one's better? I love Sayasit. <laughs> oh man! I, <laughs> you know, I, I love okay. it. But anyways, talking about like being happy, like the enjoyment, I could see there's a lot of guitars or basses in your back. So is that something, is that like your hobby? Yeah, um, I've played since I was your age, uh, played in a lot of bands, but now my hobby is more actually building than uh, playing. 
So I have a wood shop in my garage and uh, several of them uh, I've built. Actually, all of them I've modified with electronics, um, painting, uh, swapping out necks and things like that. So, yeah, the playing is less so because I'm old, like I said, and nobody wants to play with me. So I might as well build. Oh, man. <laughs> I would I would jump to play with you if I had the chance, but I, I can't I can't do guitar. <laughs> so you said you were. Well, I have dance? a quick question going. Oh, me and Jason, we keep we keep I'll... interrupting each other. Sorry, it's just something that's going on today. Um, but yeah, like you, nine. Uh, I'll just ask real quick. Of... Like, how long have you been at Sayasid? <laughs> this is only my fourth year at Sayasid. Oh, okay. Uh, it's our third. So. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before you did say that you were part of some bands, like. Uh, yeah. Any like performances and stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. How, how do you that? find how time for this stuff? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that? How do you find time for this kind of thing? Because it's like well, I don't get teacher. to play out anymore. But uh, uh, yeah. but the building and and just practicing in my uh, my office, I try to find you know a little time, not necessarily every day, but maybe on the weekends. All right. Yeah, it's it's nice to have a hobby that you can like. If yeah. you want to get, just, like, just turn to it. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'd be in any trouble if you didn't have it, though. Yeah. 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 My wife says I have a problem. I have too many on the wall. I need to sell some. <laughs> uh, I think I think, yeah, it looks, probably, I don't think it looks great. Yeah, it does it's look cool, really little little aesthetic aesthetic there. Problem. Yeah, it's definitely a good problem to have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Um. So our next question for you is. So we definitely only, we see you as like a teacher and you definitely see us as like your students, of course. What I, we want to ask is how, what were you like when you were our age in high school? Like, were you towards, were you like a, like a sports jock or were you like, um, like an intelligent kid? Were you a troublemaker? Where, where did you fall? <laughs> um, I was probably very confusing as a kid because I did well in school, um, but I didn't quite fit in. I'll be honest, I had platinum blonde mohawk as a senior. Um, you know, the chains, I did not fit the part of, let's say, uh, <laughs> a good student. I didn't get into any trouble. I didn't, you know, do anything, you know, suspicious or anything. I just played in bands. And I think the worst thing that would happen is the one band I was in, as, in my senior year, uh, the neighbors called the cops almost daily on us. Because we oh. play so loud. Oh, and wow. You're yeah. knocking like, all right, you know, it's us again. Quiet down. <laughs> so that was probably the extent of my, my mischief. <laughs> I never knew you had a mohawk before. Like, that's uh, something I, I can't I really see. see it now. Yeah, I can't see so it. Those, those pictures are uh, long uh, hidden. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I'm hide sure them we, away? We or? can dig them up. We can dig them up. Definitely. Eventually. Okay. Dig them up. <laughs> yeah, that was a life long ago. Yeah. Wow, I, I'm just having my trouble, trouble wrapping my head around that. <laughs> you with them? <a>, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, I have, a, I have a quick question. When you were back in like uh, like our age, high school, was maybe like robotics and technology as big of a thing, or did you kind of have you seen a flourish as you've gotten older as well? It really, as I had gotten older, there were no robotics. Like in in my technology classes, or even um, science classes, or anything, there was nothing of the kind. Uh, I'll say the closest thing that I saw in high school uh, was what they call a plotter. So I was learning CAD and the plotter was basically a big printer where you would actually swap out what looked like markers. So you'd put a colored marker in and they would draw out whatever you designed on this CAD software. And let me tell you, it was really slow and really low <laughs> tech. So halfway through, that yeah. mark would run out, kind of like your, your printer runs out of ink, oh, and then you right. have to swap it out. So it, it was a very long, arduous process that really got you nowhere. So like, what were the tech classes? Like, were the, like... Mine were very traditional, like wood shop, uh, metal shop, uh, and things like that. So what I just described was the closest thing to what you have right now at Sayasit, which is not even in the yeah, same <laughs> one of the other questions we wanted to ask was of course like we um like we talked about you've been in high school uh what is like a piece of what is some like advice you would give to us high schoolers like i don't know it doesn't have to be to get like the best grades just like in everyday life 
what, what's like some advice you have? Well, I would say kind of like, you know, the joke I make every once in a while, about go home and be a kid. Because I know you're all involved in so many things and, you know, it's go, 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 go. Just take a pause every once in a while and just appreciate each other, hang out, do nothing every once in a while. I think it does a lot for the site. <laughs> Make a podcast for you. I think you're... There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good advice. Oh, okay. I think a lot of... Sorry. Go no, ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I think that's, that's good advice. Though, because like a lot... Yeah, you're right. Like a lot of kids, especially once they get towards these like junior years and probably like even some with senior years, they get like overwhelmed and there's a lot of classes they're taking. And I feel like um, maybe sometimes they're social life deteriorates a little bit and i think it's very important to kind of just yeah take a step back and just like appreciate what you have in the moment so yeah i think that's good advice to follow especially with like all the ap's we have to like seem to take and everything that all these social norms that we're getting in like society now especially in syosa where it's it's the peak of it all gotta be in those three clubs gotta be president <laughs> of one gotta be in seven ap's gotta get fives on every ap exam but <laughs> that's just the way it is yeah. yeah, it's hard, and I hope you but, guys you know get to appreciate each other because my hope is that you're going to be lifelong friends, and you're going to remember this time, mm -hmm. and it's just going to help you build you know a, a great foundation as you go off into college and you know jobs and families if you have families and things like that. Um, but you know the bonds you make now can be lifelong. Yeah, and it's like it's also important not to just focus on like education and like also learn like how to like exist in society. I guess. Like, this is something my dad always says, like, all the education, it'll get your foot in the door, but then after you're that, everything's up to you, like, what, you, what the person you are, so, I guess, yeah, yeah. books yeah, can only take education, the education, yeah. we all just spoke, <laughs> I'm saying, not sorry, I, just like, <laughs> I was gonna say, the education lets you in the room, but your personality keeps you in the room, yeah, so. well said, anyway, <laughs> man, <laughs> So, so I feel like one of the yeah sorry sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I feel like one of the things <laughs> more than about having a social life and also you know balancing that on top of schoolwork and just taking a step back is that COVID kind of limited it a lot because people are just kind of stuck in their homes well for the for the most part people and I want to say people I mean students kind of just stuck in their homes doing their work staring at a screen for like seven hours a day and after that it's like you can't really hang out with your friends because you don't want to get sick and that kind of i feel like that kind of halted everything for that you know year and a half two years what it was but hopefully now that it's kind of you know things are lighting up a little bit that people are gonna start going back to like what you said because it wasn't always like this some people like we used to be more social less competitive and like in our school specifically but hopefully like you said um, people will start to take a step back and be start being kids again yeah, because you think about it, you think hear a lot of these generations, like every generation has a hardship story and how they, you know, persevered and made it through. And that's kind of what gave them the character. Boy, do you have a story. Yeah. Think about this. yeah. What we're finding now as things are kind of, you know, seeing, I don't know if we'll call it the tail end, you know, of COVID, but there are a lot of silver <laughs> linings. Um, like, for instance, what we're doing right here, this isn't something that really existed as much a couple years ago. And, you know, you see all these technologies or you see all these new ways of communicating or, um, you know, just interacting that were developed because of this. So, you know, there's growth right there and the story is just going to build. So it turns from, you know, a hardship into something greater. And I think you're all part of that. Yeah. You're going to be that generation that does make it greater. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. I really hope so. <laughs> yeah. I know it is. So uh, what I was asking though was, Mr. Egan, you said that like every generation has like a hardship story, and like um, what I was asking is, what what's like your generation's hardship story? Because in no way to like make it seem as if like you're extremely old, but like your time was vastly different than ours is today, because society changed so much. So what what's like the problems you guys faced when you were like our age and your teenage years? So if I were to show you a lot of pictures from my youth, it would be a lot of bad haircuts. So there you go. That's my hardship. I look back in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? I mean, but, you know, that definitely has a You know, um, during 9-11, that was, you know, 
crazy, unheard of. That was, uh, you know, something to deal with. And uh, even just all of the cultural issues uh, that have gone on for years. Um, but honestly, this now in my later years, this is really the big one for me uh, because I feel like as a kid, I was almost unaffected by a lot of what was going on. I definitely was not aware, as aware as all of you are now. You see more in tune what's going on. You have an understanding and uh, you definitely are more impacted than I was as a kid. I was oblivious. I didn't have the internet, uh, didn't watch the news as much. So there were a lot of things that didn't matter to me. So I, you know, that they say ignorance is bliss. You know, it was kind of uh, blissful for a while. <laughs> yeah, like going on with what you said, yeah. the pandemic is kind of hard not to get affected by it because yeah. literally kids, children, older people, just normal adults everybody's affected by it you're all in danger because of it so yeah just forced to change because of it yeah you know what's um one thing i was gonna mention before that like we had a like virtual schooling like in some cases and like whenever they put us into breakout rooms like it was just so like painfully awkward because like everyone was like kind of silent and just like didn't really want to talk so like even like when they try to initiate like a social setting because like that was so just forgotten because of the pandemic in the first place when they try to initiate it again it seemed like everyone forgot what to do so that was kind of it was kind of interesting to just kind of see and i'm glad it's kind of gone away because i think uh it's good to have be social and have friends <laughs> so i think it's a good change to start coming back personally. yeah and sometimes it takes something like this to appreciate what you have you know a lot of times yeah. we go on and you know we just go out about on a, go on a better business and then when you, you're taken away, you're like, whoa, wait a second. So, you know, again, another silver, li silver lining, it makes you realize, you know, how important these little things are. Yeah, definitely. Very good point. All right. So, um, we are now gonna move on to our final set of questions. We like to call them our quick fire questions. So these are questions that we call them quick fire, but you do not, you could take your time answering them, but it's like a wide assortment of questions, not focusing on any specific topic. So I'll say the first one. Um, okay, so what is your favorite day of the week and why is it Wednesday? <laughs> I would have to say Wednesday. Wow. Whoa. Because oh. no. I get the Hyo Syndicate. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, Syndicate yeah. Wednesday. Syndicate. Even I know I'm a part of that, kind of, not really, but... Everybody on the show I'm a big fan of Wednesday. Everyone knows about yeah. it now. The word is definitely spreading. <laughs> That's a, it's a big holiday around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it was one of the pitches at, uh, during judging. Yep, yep we, <laughs> we, said, wait, we talked about wait, it. Wait, so wait, what at, is our, it? at our competition, we were talking about how we literally made our own weekly national holiday, and it's our meeting day. <laughs> and the judges went for it. Um, but That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, so next one is what is your favorite music genre? That's hard because I'm all over the place. <laughs> um, I would say like a jazz funk type thing. I'm a big Frank Zappa fan. I don't know if you, any of you know who uh, Frank I Zappa was. No, no, I don't. He was very avant-garde for the time and they're very all over the map. So there's rock, there's jazz, there's funk. It's uh, eclectic. I really do like upbeat jazz. Like you can definitely tell if you listen to the intro music, it's all just upbeat jazz and um, <laughs> all the music. Like I don't know, it's just so like different than everything we have. But it's so like yeah, nice. I have. I a, agree. I like a follow. -up. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. I'll follow with another music question. So in terms of, you know, listening to music, are you more of a lyrics type of person or a beat type of person? Or maybe like a mixture of both? Probably more of the, the beat. I think I listen to the music more than I do the lyrics. There'll be a lot of times, you know, I'll be humming a song and, you know, my wife will say, do you know what that song's about? I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the beat. Yeah. That's fair. I was going to mention before, like, about funk and, like, jazz. Like, I just, like, and also, this is kind of tying into what you just said, too. Like, I feel like I've been listening more and more to the beats and production of, of songs nowadays. Also, I just love hearing, like, in jazz and funk, kind of, like, the saxophones and the and the horns and the trumpets. Like, it's so fun and to just listen to. And it's just such a unique sound, so. 
that's a, that's a good music taste uh, to have. <laughs> Jason approved. <laughs> so one of the last things we like to do is we offer the guests to ask any question they'd like to ask about us. So it could be anything, uh, any just anything you want. Okay. So what do you guys do for fun? That's a good question. That is um, <laughs> so I, I, I like. Yeah, you go ahead, Ashim. All right. So I play a sport outside of school. A lot of people on the podcast, I mean, that listen, are probably know, but I play badminton uh, outside of school and for the school, obviously. So on weekends, I spend like many hours just playing just for fun because I enjoy it. So even if I'm kind of busy, I'll try and make time for it on the weekend because I just feel like if it's a hobby that you enjoy, even if you're busy, you make time to do it. Yeah, I really enjoy that. Now, where do you go outside of school? Is there like a league? Is there like um... I just, well, I get coaching. There's a place in Roslyn called Long Island Sports Center, and they have they do all the events. So I get coaching. I've gone to like outside tournaments before, like in New Jersey and stuff. So yeah, cool. it's just yeah. It's fun how so it was insane about him, by the way. Yeah, like, he, not he's not gonna say it right now, but he's like all county, he's second best in the school, but he won't say it here, of course. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, we're yeah, right. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess it's uh, kind of a hobby, but I do track for the school. So that takes up a good amount of my time, maybe like two hours a day during the week, except for Sunday, because we have off during that day. Um, and other than that, I mean, really just to pass the time and just what I like to do, I like to hang out with, with these uh, goons uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> like just like listen to music and I just like am playing games with them too. And, yeah, that's how I like to pass the time usually. What, what kind of games do you guys play? Video games or are they other games? or? Yeah, I mean, also in real life, basketball too is a uh, fun one I like to do. Like just hang outside and just go to Orange Place and just play some basketball. And uh, also video games too. like. Like, uh, someone, people are gonna clown it, like, people are gonna joke on it, but Minecraft is a great multiplayer game to play with your friends. <laughs> it's great. Uh, we do it sometimes. Not, we haven't done it in a while, actually, but that's, good. that's a good game. That's awesome. I know my daughter, she's a senior, she still plays with her boyfriend and friends, so. It's like, the best it's fun. Game. It's actually fun. Yeah. Um, I guess I can go. Um, so, they've definitely hit it on, like, a lot of the stuff, but, yeah, I love to play basketball with them. I definitely like also watch a lot of basketball. Big Knicks fan. I'm pretty sure you've probably you've probably seen it. Uh, big Knicks fan, but also NBA playoffs are starting soon, so looking forward to oh, that. Yeah. Started in I think 30 minutes actually. Um, yeah, but oh man, oh wow. I other than basketball, I definitely like love making videos. So like, I I'm like the editor of all of this. So like all the behind the scenes stuff. It's I'm just, sorry. Like, I'm not trying. I'm not, not fishing for not fishing for compliments. <laughs> not fishing for any credit or anything. But it's just it's just a hobby. So yeah, just love editing all that stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, as for me, what I do outside of school is, or I guess just in general, is I like to exercise a lot. Um, I the show might do the same amount of exercise as me, but like I I'm definitely more like you know the weightlifting guy. Um, and also, I like to read manga. If you know what that is, it's basically like it's like Japanese. It's a form of like Japanese comics, pretty much. But it's like kind of like that. I like to read that in my spare time whenever I get the chance. And it's just, you know, depending on what you read, uh, some of the stuff it's you could just read it for entertainment. But I've also read some stuff that you know it actually like teaches you like valuable life lessons and just honestly how to be a better person. As funny as it may, might sound, it, <laughs> it does teach you how to be a better person. So that's what I do. Oh, that's great. So good, you are actual teenagers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, We're being kids. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Only sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Um, but that was our last question. And the last thing we like to do with um, our guests is that we like, to, we like to give them the opportunity to kind of like say the final message to the viewers. So you can just say like whatever you want. Um, yeah, feel free to go ahead. Oh, that's a tough one. It's heavy. On spot, very on spot. So <laughs> no, no pressure, just um, like anything you want. I guess it just relates to what we were talking about, you know, before, as far as just, you know, pausing every once in a while. I know a lot of times we're in this rat race and uh, it's go, go, go. Uh, just take the time to appreciate each other and um, 
just know that you have each other to, you know, rely on and kind of push each other too. So uh, it's kind of good. I'm not saying, you know, go be lazy, but I'm just <laughs> saying that, you know, realize you can have these moments. And then, you know, there are those other moments where you do kind of challenge each other. And, you know, that's what you're there for. That's why you're friends. You know, friends should be there to push you, yeah. um, be there for you, and, uh, you know, sometimes challenge you. So. That is a good life lesson. Great. <laughs> Yeah, great exactly. closing word. Definitely. And that is all we're going to have for today. So I just want to say one more time, thank you to Mr. Hagen for coming thank on you. the show with us. Thank you thank very you much. So much. We thank really you. do appreciate it. And thank you to all the viewers watching at home. And we will see you guys next week on the DMT show. All right, peace out. Bye. Bye.